Welcome to America's Favorite Wellness Hour, Healthy by Nature, with certified clinical nutritionist, Marty Whittakin. Welcome back. Bill Sardi introduced me to investigative health journalist Jeff T. Bowles, and that's pretty high praise. He's the author of a peer-reviewed scientific journal article and several important books, including The Miraculous Cure for and Prevention of All Diseases, What Doctors Never Learned. One of his books, 16 Fascinating COVID-19 and Spanish Flu Mysteries Solved, it was previously censored by Amazon, but it's finally been updated and available now at um, a couple of different ways. Um, I have in the description of today's show in the archives, I have links to it on uh, and an email address, which first I'll welcome you, Jeff, and then have you give the email address. Welcome. Oh, hi. Oh, thanks for having me back. Um yeah, I had a book uh, out for about two and a half years ago about COVID-19. The original title was what you just said, the 16 uh, uh, fascinating COVID-19 and Spanish flu mysteries solved. That was up as an ebook for about a week, and then it was banned by Amazon. It's been banned for two and a half years. But then I saw they st- Amazon started allowing some more books come out coming out as, uh, you know, critical of the CDC and, uh, you know, mainstream uh, oh, d- guidance on COVID. And, you know, even one by Dr. Mercola, which was pretty provocative compared to the stuff they allowed uh, when I put my book out. So I thought it was about time to try and get this thing republished again. So I updated the book. And I uncovered the big conspiracy. I added all that in the back of the appendices. Uh, It's a must read. Uh, It shows how corrupt the CDC and NIH are, as well as Fauci, and uh, and how they let this uh, pandemic go on when there there was an easy way to stop it. And I don't know, well, I have a reason why they did that. But um, so now I've got that eat that ebook was available for about a week or two and it was made into the top 55 of the best-selling medical ebooks and then i was giving it away free that's the way you market books through amazon and all of a sudden it was like it was like jumped up to the number 11 uh ranked uh best-selling free book they have a list of free books and then it was it was headed to number one and when I woke up in the morning, I, there had been like at least 40 or 50 more downloads, which would have ranked it at number one. And all of a sudden, boom, blocked, blocked again. It was banned again. So I've had it. Uh, so what I want to do is give the book away free to everybody who's listening. And just remember this email address. I'd, I'd like you to just send me an email. And the email address is easy to remember. It's banned. COVID book at g- gmail.com. No spaces, uh, just banned COVID book at gmail.com. I'll send you a PDF file, which is a complete book you can read on your computer or whatever device, even your Kindle. And uh, it's only 12,000 megabytes or something. It's not, not too big a file. I compressed it. And, but yeah, I'd like to give that away free. So that's the situation where we stand right now. So okay, well, back we'll, to you, Marty. we'll repeat that again toward the end of the show, and it will be in the notes from today's program on the archives. Um, yeah, it's very scary how not only the legacy broadcast media and the major newspapers all circled the wagons and signed a document agreeing to publicize only the government's side of the story, but then the social media and uh, a publisher like Amazon uh, joined and prevented us from having any kind of debate about what was going on. And it's just so not the way science works. It's not the way that previous vaccines have worked. 
uh, as far as the safety protocols and so on. And we were bamboozled. And thank goodness for people like Peter McCullough and Jeff Bowles for not being afraid to tell the truth. So thank you for that. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, Elon Musk said it was insane. Yes, yes. So. Insane and, and I think criminal, but it, it'll take a while for that to play out. Oh, yeah, it's criminal, all right. I'll, I've got names, and I'm going to name names in this show. Um, we aren't going to keep people in suspense too long. I mean, we could do that. We could fill up the whole show with what the mysteries were and let them read the book to find out the <laughs> answer, but... I'm afraid some people won't do that, and I want to make sure we save as many lives as we can. So let's just start with a couple of your favorite mysteries, and then after this first break, we'll tell them what the answer is. Oh, yeah. So my second version of this book, I retitled it, uh, Can You Solve the Fascinating COVID-19 and Spanish Flu Puzzle with 16 Pieces and the Solution If You Can't? So the book starts off with just, it doesn't tell you the th one th common thread that runs through all 16 puzzle pieces. But once you discover that, you would understand uh, how to prevent uh, any future pandemics or uh, to keep yourself safe during this current so-called pandemic. Um, the, uh, my favorite one is uh, chapter two, it describes this town, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's like Iga Kick, Iga Kick, Alaska. It was back in 1919. Uh, the Spanish flu was ra racing around the world in 1918, but it didn't it didn't touch Alaska until 1919 because they were so far removed from everybody. But when it hit, it just devastated almost every town in in Alaska. Like. People, 90% of the adults are just dropping dead in their tracks. The dogs are eating their bodies. It didn't affect the children so much. And then, but there was this one little village called Iga Kick. It was right on the mouth of the river, a uh, river at, at the Pacific Ocean. And they, they worked, at all these people, about 150, they worked at a salmon canning factory and they would ship salmon. They'd catch the salmon coming up the river and, and ship, can them and ship them down to that lower 48. And for some reason, this little village, not a single person got sick. And then, and they didn't know about the pandemic until uh, this boat comes washing down the river with the dead adults in it and a, a few children sitting on top of them, Inuit children. And they went to look at these villages around them and they found everyone like dead. And this one village was just untouched for some reason. And I don't say what it is, but until the end of the book, but the, the scientists always thought like water kind of could possibly suppress the spread of the virus, or maybe they're cleaning so much because they work in the, you know, cannery, something like that. But those aren't really the real reasons, but I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> What's another, another interesting one was, uh, chapter one was you start, you can go to worldometer.com and, and track all over the world, uh, the coronavirus, how many people have died, how many deaths per million, it's all by country. And then you can track by state in the United States. It used to be, could track it by county. It's great data. And or should we pause right now? Well, I want to say oh. you've done a miraculous job in this book of corralling all of that data and analyzing it for the trends and you've included the age of people and all kinds of things um we've just got i think 30 seconds here before the break have people Let hanging there this. through the commercials and then we'll we'll give them the key to the solution when we come back this is healthy by nature my name is marty Whitakin. my guest is investigative health journalist jeff bowles He's the author of 16 Fascinating COVID-19 and Spanish Flu Mysteries Solved. We'll let you in on the secret as soon as we come back. Don't go away. Jeff Bowles' book, 
so important. He so wanted the information out that regardless of being banned, he gave away probably thousands. Do you how many thousands of books you gave away free? Oh, at least yeah. three to 5,000. It's hard to say. And then everyone could share it. I encourage people to share it. So it's probably been. Well, and we fine. shared the link to the free book. So uh, there's no telling how many thousands of our listeners did that as well. But that's just a testament to the fact that you wanted people to have benefit of it much more than you cared about selling a book because you could have had some less controlling publisher publish it. But um, I'm. Oh, yeah, I'm that just, book would have, would have made me a lot of money well, had it been printed, uh, not been banned, banned. It was really starting to sell like hotcakes. So. Um, Let's start. I know. And oh, let me finish. Let me finish that uh, second puzzle piece. So okay. So I, when you go to worldometer dot com, um, you can uh, sort uh, every country by like who. You just click at the top of this big table, and it'll sort all the countries like who's got the highest deaths per million, or who's got the highest number of cases per million. And so uh, back then, I was just clicking on. I noticed there was this little tiny country that just had a huge number of deaths per million called San Marino. And it's, it's actually a small country inside the country of Italy. And it's a very strange country. It's, they say there's not a level piece of ground in the whole country and it's not on the ocean. It's just a little bit inland, but it's been around for forever. And uh, it's very small. But it's basically everyone lives like on the sides of hills or, you know, or near mountains, uh, smaller mountains. And for some reason, the COVID was, oh, and it's very highly dense. It's one of the densest uh, uh, areas, land or countries in the world. Population and, uh, people density. Were just, yeah, yeah. And they, they were uh, like number of people per square mile. And so they were just dropping like flies. Like they had a five times. Uh, maybe like four or five time higher death rate per million than the next uh, country down at the time. But they also had a very elderly population. And so I thought it had something to do with the mountains was uh, keeping the virus from, you know, the air was maybe stagnating or something. And so, but if you don't want to know the real answer, you could probably stop listening now and just ask, uh, email me for that book at bandcovidbook at gmail.com. But if you listen any further, you're gonna we're gonna ruin the surprise for you. So let's ruin it. And and then uh send it to your the book to your friends and don't oh, yeah, you don't can, give them the answer. Let them uh get all wrapped up in try the try to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a fun puzzle. It's a real there's some real brain teasers. Like uh one of the, uh, one last one is just uh it seemed like lower altitude mountains, like 3,000 feet or less. For some reason, they made uh, the COVID situation much worse. But being up in the really high altitude mountains, like uh, uh, north of or higher than Denver, uh, almost nobody got COVID in the high mountains, but in the low mountains, it made it much worse. That's another puzzle piece that really blew my mind for a while, but I finally figured that out. How, how so, many of okay. these puzzles did you go through before you figured it out? Oh, I kind of knew right off the bat because I <laughs> knew ahead of time. So, so I was just looking for confirmation of what I was, uh, you know, so I, I would find these weird things that confer confirmed what I already knew. And, and unfortunately, uh, the um, powers that be are not as observant as you are. <laughs> Yeah, well, they might. I think they are. I think they know it. Some of these people know what's going on at the top, and uh, th there's some sinister stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, so once I we ruin the uh, secret, then I can explain uh, this big conspiracy that's going on. And I, I've got proof in the book and the appendices. You can just look at the NIH and CDC websites and how they talk about this one factor, and, and they, they're purposely spreading disinformation about this uh, fantastic yeah, substance. I, I uh, or, just wrote a letter to the editor of the Dallas Morning News about being suspicious that 
disinformation can come from the authorities also from the government that, uh, oh yeah, I've got the I got the smoking gun right in my appendices, like uh, stuff yeah. right off the NIH website, CDC. Well, which I will, which we'll go into. Yeah, uh, but let's let people know what was the common thread through all of these sixteen mysteries, and probably a whole lot more. Oh yeah, well it turns out uh, the people that um, worked at the little canning factory for salmon in Alaska. Uh, apparently, <clears throat> they were engaging in widespread employee theft. <laughs> or or the boss or the owners were given, let them have some, some of the uh, fruits of their labor. So they're eating lots of salmon, wild salmon, all during this outbreak. And there's no other fish, I think, that, that's, that's any higher. There's no other food that's higher in vitamin D3 than uh, wild salmon. So the, the substance is vitamin D3. It's a, it's what you make when you sit in the sun and it hits, sun hits your skin and your skin makes this hormone called vitamin D3. It's not really a vitamin. It controls 2,700 genes in your immune system and tissue remodeling systems. And when your D3 levels are high, your immune system is just jacked up and you're like, your killer T cells are just ready to go. And uh, when you have high levels of D3, when a killer T cell that's activated by D, vitamin D encounters uh, an infected cell, virus infected cell, it kills it within an hour and a half. And so I've been taking high dose D3 for the last 25 years, except for one short period. And I've only had one cold in, in the last 25 years. And that was when I decided to wash the D3 out of my system about 10 years ago, just for, I don't know, just on a whim. And other than that, I've never had a cold. So I was never worried about COVID. Um, I took no measures to protect myself. And I was hoping to actually catch the, catch it so I could build a natural immunity. I'm sure I've had COVID. I just didn't even notice it. Because like most people probably don't even get symptoms if their D3 levels are high enough. And then the same thing with this uh, San Marino, that country, uh, you've got the elderly. I need to give a caveat. I do believe that COVID is still dangerous to people who might be immunocompromised, uh, meaning your thymus no longer makes new T killer T cells in response to a, a novel virus. And those are people 65 or over Possibly because a lot of people by the age 65, their thymus, which makes all these uh, killer T cells and also the cells that uh, uh, help make antibodies. If your killer T cells aren't working, the antibodies is your backup immune system. But people over 65, some of them, their thymus has turned to fat and they, you can't really make uh, killer T cells. Or your, your immune system doesn't work right. Those people still have to be uh, nervous about COVID. It's not a magic bullet for the elderly, but anyone 65 or under or who's got a working immune system, if you're taking lots of D3, you really have n no reason to worry about COVID at all. And if you don't have a working immune system, it's doubtful Stay that the vaccines are going to do you any good because that's they depend on that also. True. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you, you if you're if you have an impaired immune system so the, really the best thing for people to do during covid was anyone over 70 should have just stayed inside and there should have been no lockdowns no mask wearing masks don't work and i'll tell you why next session okay well yes that music does mean we're creeping up on a a break here and my guest is jeff bowles we're talking about a mystery that should not have been a mystery about COVID-19 and other conditions like diabetes. So stay with us. A lot of really important information to come. And then we're going to talk about aging. Subscribe to Marty's free newsletter at the Healthy by Nature Show website, hbnshow.com, hbnshow.com. 
I want to get to a question about what happened to all this wonderful information that's available about vitamin D, but take us back to San Marino. I don't think we finished explaining why those elderly people, we took a right turn at elderly and uh, we need to get back to the mountains. Oh, right, right. Yeah. So these people, if you look at pictures on the internet for San Marino, they're, they're all living in shadows of these mountains. And I found uh, people living near north, south mountain ranges that are not too, not really high, like in Italy. Uh, that blocks out the sun for a, a large portion of the day. Even the, the early morning sun, apparently, there's a cumulative effect of how much D3 is in your system based on how much sun exposure you get over the year. It's kind of a slow moving average. So these people in uh, San Marino are surrounded by all these uh, low altitude mountains and uh, they live in the shadows. So their D3 levels are, are much lower than uh, people that live out in the plains. And there's another mystery, like all the people in Italy were dying and there's this town called Ferrara. Nobody got sick. Well. Uh, Italy is just covered with north-south mountains, and these people that lived in Ferrara lived in the only area of Italy that has, like, flat plains. So they were getting sun all day long. So that, that was the mystery of San Marino. Uh, tell us about the vital study. Oh, okay. So, well, let me get to – that's actually part of my conspiracy unraveling. Oh, okay. But – but it's that's that I should talk about uh, the CDC and the NIH first. Okay. Okay. Oh no, let me talk about this one study that came out in September of uh, 2021. The title is "COVID-19 Mortality Risk Correlates Inversely with Vitamin D3 Status." So that means your risk goes up when your D3 levels go down. And then it goes on, and a mort mortality rate close to zero could theoretically be achieved at 50 nanograms per milliliter of a vitamin D. It's the results of a systemic review and meta-analysis, and it was published in Nutrients uh, Science Journal. So these people did a little study of all these studies, and they figured out that if everyone had had a blood level of 50 nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D3, that there, theoretically there should have been no deaths from COVID. Um, but, if I can interject here just a second, people who even thought to get their vitamin D tested, and probably not because the doctor ordered it, but because they requested it, then they get this report back and it shows for a long time, it used to say that if you had 20, you were okay. And then they bumped it up to like 32, a level of 32. And here you're saying it should have been 50. And we've had experts on this show that say you should have at least 70 to 120. Right, right. Yeah, so now I've learned that from a doctor in Germany who – he read my book and he wrote another book. His name is Dr. Harold Schell. He starts, he's treating his glaucoma patients with vitamin D3 now. He gave up on the uh, drugs. He said D3 is much better, but he had a fistula that the, his doctor friends wanted to uh, do some surgery. It's like a hole in your intestine. And so he was scheduled to do some surgery, but he started taking high dose D3 and it closed up all by itself. And he figured out that you need a blood level of 120 nanograms per milliliter or a little higher before you trigger your tissue remodeling system to uh, properly repair any old injuries. And, and it also you need that level to cure any auto. Well, I want to get back to high levels and why the doctors freak out if you if you are over 100, they just you know, lose oh, yeah. your mind. Uh, we'll get back you. to that. But They've been brainwashed in med school by the yeah. conspiracy. But, uh, you wanted to work up to talking about the CDC and the NIH and the FDA. and Oh, yeah. It's just, so I went to the CDC website to see what they're saying about vitamin D3 lately. Uh, and right there on the, their front page, they say, recent trials show that vitamin D, zinc, and, and vitamin C didn't help COVID-19 patients 
And then they talk about this study uh, from JAMA magazine. JAMA's in on the conspiracy along with New England Journal of Medicine, Nature. And you can see a YouTube video by Dr. Bruce Hollis. And he goes into like all the hostility he gets. He's a vitamin D researcher. It's a fantastic video on YouTube. You've got to watch it. It's about an hour, but he names names. But he can't name them like me because he's part of the part of his livelihood depends on not ruffling too many feathers. So JAMA is an anti D3 journal and they published this one study. They only publish studies that are negative on vitamin D and their conclusion. And this is what CDC is promoting this. Uh, according to this study by JAMA, a, a single oral dose of 200,000 IUs of vitamin D3 uh, were not effective in, in helping uh, COVID patients even though it raised their blood level from 20 to 44 nanograms per milliliter. What they're not telling you is they used the wrong kind of vitamin D in this study, probably on purpose. Uh, they used the actual D3 you buy at the store. And when you take it, your body needs about seven days to convert it into a more active form called calcifediol. And then that is the form of D3 that protects you. That binds to your killer T cells and revs them up. So this study just started give, gave them one dose of 200,000 when they came in and they released everybody seven days later. And it was just long enough for their D3 to be converted uh, into the active form. And that's when they discharged everybody. So that's why they got no results. So CDC is promoting that as why D3 doesn't work. It's a totally flawed study. It's ridiculous. It's so and typical, though, that they'll use either a ridiculously low dose or the wrong form or given at the wrong time. Oh, uh, right. right. Oh, it's these easy really... to make a, a study fail if that's what you want to do. Yeah, that was, the, that was their purpose. And then uh, they ignore this one study in a Spanish hospital uh, where they had done a small pilot study and they found that giving them calcifediol, the active form, upon admission, um, just like every other day. I mean, not, they didn't even do it right. They, they didn't do it to give them enough, but it reduced mortality rate by like, uh, or ICU admissions by 98%. And the mortality rate was down to zero in a small study. So they did another bigger study with 447 patients with calcifediol and they, they, they got a 79% decrease in ICU admissions and a 76% decrease in uh, deaths. So they ignored that study. So did the NIH. Now I looked at the NIH's website and what they conclude is there's no clear evidence that vitamin D supplementation provides protection against infection or improves outcomes in patients with COVID-19. Uh, evidence is still lacking. And so they cite that uh, one dose um, one dose study from Brazil of 200,000. And then they, they start, Jeff, they cite like go. another. That's, uh, okay. Hold that we'll thought. That. We'll, we'll be back in, in uh, just shortly after these commercials. My guest is Jeff Bowles. We're talking about vitamin D and COVID. So please stay tuned for more details. Subscribe to Marty's free newsletter at the Healthy by Nature Show website, hbnshow.com, hbnshow.com. Investigative health journalist Jeff Bowles is the author of a fascinating book that he will send you an, an electronic version for free if you send an email to bandcovidbook at gmail.com. Is that right? That's it. Okay. Yep. I'll repeat that again at the very end of the show, but um, just packed with wonderful information and observable effects that should uh, should be a wake up call to our health authorities, unless they don't want to see it. And it appears that that's the case because they're doing bad studies and relying on those instead of what they can see with their own eyes and good studies. And um, when one of these kinds of puzzling things comes up, I'm usually reminded of the Jerry Maguire 
line, show me the money. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, um, talk oh. to us, because uh, I do want to get in a little bit on your upcoming aging book, which will we'll have you back to talk more about that when it publishes. But uh, tell us a little bit more about the machinations at these government agencies. Oh. Okay, well, I found the, a smoking gun right on uh, NIH's website. So they cite all these studies about vitamin D that didn't work using single doses. Bruce Hollis, the uh, D3 researcher, sit, notes that you can't get good effects with those big single doses. You need to take it every day. And then, um, and at the end, they find, so they cite all these s flawed studies. And finally, at the end, they, they cite one study trying to look fair where they used uh, this really potent form of vitamin D called calcitriol. It's even more potent than calcifediol. And so they gave it, uh, this study, they gave 50 people of the uh, calcifediol, uh, or no, calcitriol. The other 50 got nothing. Now, at the, the NIH on their website said, uh, they noted that, oh, there was an increase of uh, oxygenation in the calcifediol calcitriol taking group up to 13 up to 91 and uh the, those with no treatment had oxygenation of just 13 and i don't even know what those units mean but that's like a seven times difference and then they state at 13 they're barely alive right so then then they state at the end there were no difference to, differences between the arms of the, the two sides of the trial and the length of hospital stay mortality or the need for ICU admission or hospital readmission. I looked up the study. That is a total lie. It's They're lying right there on the website. This is a smoking gun. So if you look at the study, the control group stayed in the hospital for 9.2 days. The, the uh, D3 group was only 5.5 days. There were two ICU admissions in the control group, zero for the vitamin D group. There was uh, three people who died in the control group, zero in the calcitriol group, and then four people uh, who are readmitted within 30 days in the control group and only two in the vitamin D group. So they're lying right there on the, their website. And it would appear that the government in general did not want any publicity of something, whether it's preventive or treatment, that would confuse people into not getting the vaccines because they were very much invested in everybody. Oh, no, no, no. That, I mean, that's one part of it. It's much, much bigger than that. Here's the problem for big pharma and big medicine. If, if people had learned that vitamin D could protect them from COVID at high doses, they would start taking it year round and they would wipe out almost all immune autoimmune diseases. Um, it would wipe out at least 90% of the medical industry, big pharma. That's why they're so scared of vitamin D. I mean, they, they can make a little money on vaccines, but the big problem is they don't want anyone to know about vitamin D. They've been trying to outlaw it since it was basically discovered in the 1920s. And so now you've got this New England Journal of Medicine uh, editor and he sat on the IOM, that was the Institute of Medicine that was always uh, saying that you should, people should only take 200 IUs of D3 a day. It's like pulling teeth to get a, to recommend 400. Then in 2010, they said, oh, okay, maybe they should take 600 IUs. It's all ridiculous because you can make 20,000 IUs a day uh, or in just a half hour of sunbathing in your skin. So these are just, meaningless amounts and so they've uh a guy named clifford rosen uh he sat on that board along with joanne manson and now joanne manson is in charge of the vital study uh this is back in 2010 when they were recommending 600 and they were saying oh you shouldn't take any more than 600 and then she got in charge of this vital study at harvard where they used 25,000 people uh, they give them all 2,000 units of vitamin D, like a meaningless amount. And what they do is they say, oh, we've checked all these uh, things like cardiovascular disease, cancer risk, this and that. It doesn't work for anything. Then uh, that's because they're using too low a dose. And then this Clifford Rosen wrote an editorial in the New England Journal of Magazines like, people should stop taking D3. It doesn't work. Just look at the vital study. And then... Uh, 
I like to see how much D3 heat takes. They should put them on a lie detector on live, live TV. But that's uh, that's what's going on. That's the conspiracy. I'm naming names. and th These are the big conspirators. Oh, and uh, folks, you really need to read the book. There's some shocking information about Dr. Fauci and studies on beagle puppies that just I oh, won't tell you awful. on the air because I don't want to ruin your day. Um, and uh, just so much useful information. We'll be back with just a tiny bit more after this break. So please stay with us. I'll repeat how to get the book for free. Sign up for podcasts or listen to past programs on our website, hbnshow.com, hbnshow.com. Jeff Ball's book also talks about type 1 diabetes and some interesting things that happened in Sweden regarding that. Um, I just wish everybody would read the book. I've read it probably two or three years ago. I'm reading now the the uh, new appendix, but I think I need to go back and just start at the beginning and read it all because I want to have all this information at my fingertips because there's so many people that it would help. The book is available free. If you email him, he'll send you an electronic uh, copy that you can read on P your computer or your tablet. And it's at P PDF. Yeah. PDF file. Yes. Um, it's banned COVID book at gmail.com. Right. And, um, uh, I'll just ask you for a, a teaser about aging because um, oh, my yeah. birthday in January, it finally dawned on me that I'm not middle-aged anymore because I've never <laughs> heard of anybody that lives to age 160, at least not since biblical days. So uh, um, but, what, um, what, are the, what are some key factors that you're looking into? Oh, the uh, stuff coming out of the laboratories these days is just amazing. In fact one part of the title of my upcoming book on aging is uh, millions now living will never grow old. And it's true. Uh, Harold Catcher is a friend of mine. I've been studying aging much longer than vitamin D. And uh, he's a scientist who has figured out, well, there's other scientists. I think he's using Yamanaka factors, but all the other scientists are doing it. They can inject rats with the uh, Yamanaka factors and reverse their DNA methylation age by 54% over several uh several shots over four days and then uh that's interesting but i've also steve horvath did a study recently and found out that all mammalian aging is programmed which goes against 120 years of science and uh th the theory of evolution is apparently incorrect or it's missing something because it's supposed to be impossible that aging's programmed but i always thought it was and wrote a paper about it in 98 and so I've been digging into Horvath stuff. We've been doing Zoom calls with Horvath and we're f trying to figure out putting all the bones, uh, all the meat on the bones of his study. And we figured out that declining GABA levels and declining AKG basically is the machine language of aging that drives all like higher levels of aging. And you can reverse your DNA methylation age by eight years and seven months uh, just taking AKG. They did a study Ponce de Leon company uh, did that with their their people. So Jeff, it's just uh, amazing uh, what's happening. This is very exciting. I'm sure most of our listeners said, oh, what kind of Greek is that? We'll sort, <laughs> it, all, we'll sort it all out when your book is due. Please let me know as soon as we can talk about it. And folks, go to the archive of today's show for lots of useful links. Thanks, Jeff. Healthy by Nature is sponsored in part by Lily of the Desert Aloeceuticals. 